What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. That's Mike. What's up? I'm Chris. And as you can see, we have yet another third person with us. It's Paco Cabezas. How are you, Paco? Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Hi, I'm doing good, man. All right. Uh, guys, we are going to do another community q and It's yes. Paco's yes. time in the hot seat. Nah, it's not hot seat. Uh, but we do uh, have a... We, pretty we hot. the hot seat. It's, well, it's pretty hot. He's been sitting there for a while. He did the <laughs> trivia just before. And uh, go check out the trivia episode he was on because he did... Well, we won't tell you how he did. You got to go watch. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but um, as always with our community Q&As, uh, we've got a bunch of questions um, from the community, a couple of sprinkled in from Mike and I, and we're just going to be asking uh, Paco some questions about his time on the show and, and some other things um, that he's working on and things like that. Yes. Oh, by the way, we're going to ask about some other things too, Paco. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, sure. Feel free All right, to... here we go. So um, so we get these questions from our community members here, and um, this one is going to be from Cool Kai J. He wants to know, he's saying, being both director and um, producer for Into the Badlands, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when shooting an episode, what do you normally do before the camera rolls? Um, like, are there any particular preparations that, that you do uh, to get ready before those cameras roll? Uh, that's more like on a daily basis. Yeah. On a daily basis or, or the pre-production of the show, you think? On a daily basis. Like, what, what would you do to prepare to right before you start to well, shoot, I believe? Well, uh, I mean, this could be a very long question, but I'm going to try to make it short. Uh, first of all, Badlands is a very specific show, as you guys know, because it's like there's no show like this. In terms of right. the aesthetics of the show and what, how cool the show is, but, but also the fact that we have at least two units going at the same time. Oh, okay. So we have yeah. the, the main unit, that is the one that I normally am directing, and then we have the, the fight unit that we affectionately call the fight club. And, cool. and we have them both working, at, and both are working at the same time. So every day, it's, it's if you, if, you know, it's like robbing a bank. Everything has to work perfectly. perfectly yeah. You know, everything has to go. The two units have to be communicating all the time. It's like you have these two gangs trying. One is trying to get to the casino through the underground. Yeah, yeah. The other one is through the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. So like, like you have to be in communication all the time. And most of my my job, especially in this last season, was was that. It's like I was directing my episodes, but I was also working with uh, Stephen Fung and Andy Chang, which I love. He's a great director. And we we had to talk almost every day about he, what he was shooting, what I was shooting. Oh. Yeah. Because the idea is like the the fight scenes and, and the action in the show. I mean, and I didn't go home. I mean, every day I was killing somebody. So it's like <laughs> it was not a day in the shooting that I went home with my, my hands <laughs> stained with blood. Right, so yeah. which which I, <laughs> of course, I'm talking about fiction, which right. I love. Uh, so, so it's like um, we had to be also, uh, the idea is like when you're watching the show, Every time that that action happens, it's flawless. It's not like yeah. like dialogue and suddenly an action scene and suddenly you feel the bump. That yeah. was one of the things that we were trying to to do better and better through season two and three. Now answering specifically the question, uh, I'm a very like my day starts. I'm always one hour before call time. I'm always there mm -hmm. because I'm that kind of like perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I go to set and everything's off, like the lights are off. Sometimes oh. it's like I'm in, in the middle of Ireland and I'm in the woods at 5 a.m. in the morning <laughs> just by myself and three guys with a truck. And I'm like, what am I doing here? But I, I can't can help it. I, I like I like my job and I want to be there the first one yeah. because of different reasons. First of all, I, I want to see the set. I want to make sure this is in place. All the, all the, the things that we're going to do in the day are in place. Like if we are like... Uh, in a location that uh, that has some furniture that I gotta move or something like that, you will see me at five a.m. in the morning moving the furniture, moving the chairs, doing yeah. this, doing that. And then because I think, uh, besides the, the 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 metaphor of the of the of the bank robbery, it's yeah. also a pirate ship. To me, it's like I'm the captain of the of the pirate ship and yeah. the pirate, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So the idea is like you have to earn the respect of your crew. You know, so they have to. You're the the yeah. first one that arrives and the last one that leaves. Yeah. And also, I'm I'm carrying this this little like clock that I have, like a watch, like an old time watch, one of oh. those that old time watch. Yeah. And and for me, I'm I'm always like, the first thing that I do is like look at my watch and be like, okay, I'm here, I'm on time. Let's just start this thing. And then I, I have a book. I wish I had the book here, man. But I, I create a book for every episode. Cool. And I and and I always have the scenes, and I have drawings, and I have like pictures, references, and yeah. that's the first thing I do. I just get very early in the day, check my book, and start working. Awesome! Yeah, great. that's awesome. Thank that's you. Great. Yeah, cool. That's great. This is also from Cool Guy. Yeah. From Cool Guy, 
out of all the episodes that you've worked on mm -hmm. uh, in the Badlands, which was the most fun to work mm -hmm. on? Uh, and which which uh, episode did you find the most challenging? Okay, question, yeah. so most challenging, I can I say two? Uh, yeah, most challenging were it. were the mid season finale that mm. I did uh, with the big battle with uh, Sherman. Yeah, and all uh, that was fantastic. Uh, I actually just rewatched oh. that scene the other day. Oh, thank you, oh, <laughs> thank you so God, much. So good. No, I mean that that is a good example of what I was saying. It's like we kind of I did let's say 70% of that scene and, and Andy did 30% or 60, 40 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, and, and now, you know, I, I wouldn't know exactly what I shot and what he shot, <laughs> but, 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 uh, it's beautiful when you can work with, a, with another director and kind of like, like, but, but most of that stuff, it's, I'm so proud of it, but it was a huge challenge. You can have imagine. <laughs> it oh, was yeah. insane to shoot that scene. Uh, it plays like a, you know, it plays like a whole, I, it, it's pretty much like 10 minutes, I think it is, or something like that. So it's pretty it's huge. Massive, yeah. uh, uh, so that was a challenge. And also, uh, I would say that episode, the other biggest challenge, I would say, is the, the episode that you haven't seen yet, which is the finale, oh, okay. <laughs> which I can say a word about, right. but it's huge. <laughs> okay, that, and that's the word. The word right. is huge. I think the biggest question out of that is, if, is, is it 3B or is it going to be season four? I think that's what everybody keeps, uh, everybody I don't know how to call it. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, originally by Miles and Al, it was intended to be a, a season that is divided in two parts in AMC, right, yeah. of course. Uh, because I think, although I love that ending with, with Pilgrim opening his eyes and, yeah. and, yeah. and I think it's a beautiful ending, it's true that it doesn't have the weight of a season finale. It feels more like a cliffhanger, right, right in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So it's a beautiful episode and a beautiful cliffhanger, but it's, it, it, in my opinion, it's the second half of the season and then you get all the characters in the same, in the very, like the next day in a way. So, so yeah. it's like, uh, to me, uh, although, you know, to be honest with you, so much going on is so big the second half of the season that actually feels like a full season in a way, yeah. you know. Uh, and if you ask me for my favorite episode, mm -hmm. oh my, I don't know, it's, I love them all. <laughs> it's like like choosing it's like selfish choice or something like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like yeah, your child or something. How about one that was uh, that comes to but your mind? You know, like like honestly, fun, yeah. honestly, that the, the finale of season two, I loved it. You know, because it's like, oh, you know what? Because although I know the show is about. Some of the uh, the shows about the action, how we shoot the action and the and, and all the martial arts and all that. All through the second season, we we're building up to the moment of Daniel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, finding her. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I remember like right now, my you know, I can feel my, my hair like doing yeah. that. You know, because I I remember that moment when I when I decided to kind of going to shoot that shot when he gets into that little space where she's kept uh, as a captive and, yeah. and, and, and I, and I start going around with the camera around them and they kiss yeah. and Oh my God. I now you're making me, moment. now you're making, yeah. Now you're making me get the chills. Yeah. I'm just remembering no, that. No, I mean, because I, I thought about it a lot. It's like this whole season is about Sonny looking for Vale and finding her, you know, yeah. and it has to be magical. Wow, yeah. And, oh, you, and, you, and, oh, man, it was so good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, thank you. But, great. yeah, probably that episode is, is the one that I enjoyed the most because uh, we were emotionally talking, let's say. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, not for nothing, that's also a testament to what you're able, what you guys are able to do. Like you said, it's not just martial arts. It's not just the action. But not mm -hmm. you have such amazing actors that for them to do the drama of the story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it all flows yeah. so seamlessly. We always mention that, it's and it's, mm -hmm. and it's like so you know it. It just it, yeah, it yeah. I mean, a so good well. example of that is like Nightingale sings no more, uh, mm -hmm. episode nine on season two. Yeah. The fight that you have in between the widow and that you have uh, with uh, Tilda. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, that fight is a good example of that. It's like uh, in the original script, I think it was dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. And then I think there was that thing that the widow slaps Tilda and then they go into the fight, right? Yeah. And, and, I, and I was designing the fight with Andy and we were thinking how to shoot it. And, and Andy shot most of that fight. But, yeah. but I wanted to make it the transition into the fight. If you, if you have yeah. a second and you look at it now, 
it's mostly you have a shot of the widow like slapping her face and then she turns around and then you have a shot of of uh, tilda like 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 licking the blood from her lip yeah. and then we go from one uh, from one side of the of the of the back of the head of the widow to the other side like cheese has changed you know yeah. it's like yeah. to me it's like when you go when you change the when you change left to right it's like you're saying hey so now we are not where we are a second ago yeah. this is this is a shift in to yeah. something worst and and we were playing i mean i i'm as a director i love to do that it's like like tell the story emotionally with the camera while the actors are also like 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 with the incredible performances are making this uh, amazing right so so that's the challenge to me the beauty of, of this show is that it's like yeah you can tell the story uh, with a fight and you can tell a story dramatically, and there's a middle ground that's an interesting one where you can mix both. It's like that scene with Queen and the Widow. Yeah. And uh, season two, when he goes to talk to the Widow, uh, remember that scene when they, they sneak by night, they sneak in, and oh, the yeah, Widow yeah, surprises yeah. them, and Waldo yeah. shows up with the, and, and suddenly it's just Queen and the Widow. And in the script, they didn't say anything. That was my idea, by the way. Oh. He, he gets his, the sword and touches her thigh with the sword. Yeah. And then she gets the sword and stops his sword. And it's almost sexual, you yeah. know, but it's yeah. elegant and subtle. That's the beauty of it. You have elements to tell a story organically and, and find exciting elements uh, to make it different. Yeah, that, yeah man. <laughs> well, you know, we, we're, we're doing a rewatch of season two very soon. Uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're doing, we're going to go and do some rewatches and we're going to, you know, put up some video on it and stuff like that. I think Sherman's, uh, we're actually going to be, out. we're going to, Sherman's helping us out on the season one stuff. Um, and then we're going to do season two. So I don't know, maybe you want to pop on for season two with us. I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Um, okay. all right. So very cool. Let's, uh, let's move to the next question. Um, let's see. Um, okay. So, um, let's, let's, uh, Shift away a little bit from um, from Badlands to talk for a brief moment about um, the fact that uh, besides just into the Badlands, you've directed episodes for some of personally my favorite shows: The Strain, oh, okay. Penny Dreadful, Fear the Walking Dead, mm -hmm. you know, Dirk Gently, mm -hmm. um, and coming up, American Gods season two. Yes, which mm -hmm. I'm so waiting for that. Um, and okay. When, and when I when I saw that you were actually going to be directing, you know, at least that one episode, I was like, oh my god, it's going to be great. Um, <laughs> so the question is, how 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 does directing an episode for Into the Badlands differ from directing other shows? Um, you know, so so how mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. how easy is it to bring your style to these other shows that you know you're essentially mm -hmm. walking into for a short period of time? I mean, there's some rules, of course, and, and of course, you guys being fans of the show, you, you notice the balance rules, right? So, yeah. so it's like what we, from the very beginning, and I learned that through the process, it's like we have these beautiful white shots, and it's they're very Kurosawa, they're very Sergio Leone, it's yeah. like like they're very Western, mm -hmm. so so you have yeah. this beautiful white shot, and then you go from a super white shot maybe to a tight close up, right? Yeah. So and that that's going for the so the. the what it says dramatically talking to me is goes from a very comic book kind of like illustration shot to the emotion right away. Right, so yeah. that's, that's what it's interesting of Badlands specifically. What makes it, what then with other shows, like for instance in The Alienist, I had, oh, we had a specific uh, a, a sh way of shooting the shots. Like we, we were only using like very wide lenses all the time. Or uh, with the strain was different than Fear the Walking Dead than it was with Penny Dreadful. But generally, what I would say is that what uh, those rules are are not the important thing. I think what I found out, especially for instance with American Gods, is that what they want in the end from me as a director is to try and find a way to tell the story in an organic, passionate way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, as because I, I, you know, I never, I never went to film school. I was working in a video store for five years, writing scripts in wow. Spain, wow. and uh, I wrote scripts behind the counter. Yeah. And then I started making very low budget movies, and then one thing to <laughs> connect oh, with the great. other, and yeah. and that's and great. I'm here now. So, for me, being passionate about what I do is very important. It's like I try to kill to keep the the, the child that was watching Bruce Lee movies and big traveling in China or 
uh, or I don't know, Indiana Jones mm-hmm. alive. You know, that's very important for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, so so when I I've, I've had offers of shows that I said no, just because I'm not passionate about them, honestly. Yeah. Everything that I've done so far, I was lucky that I was passionate about and especially Badlands. So so to me, it's like getting the script and doing that kind of like what I was saying, I create a book. And to me in that book, um, what I do normally is like on, on, on the left page, I, 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 I print the script in a very small size, mm-hmm. like the, those little like pages. Yeah. And, I, and, I have, and I put the scene on the left side of the, of the page. So I have a lot of white space. Yeah. And what happens on that white space, in the blank space, is that I start dissecting the scenes mm-hmm. and then thinking, how can I make this special? How can I make this count? How can I make this different from what I've seen before? And that goes for Badlands, American Gods, or now that I'm shooting Deadly Class. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and again, it, it's about, again, and it all connects with my inner child, with the child that was watching uh, like Evil Dead 2 and thinking, this is oh. awesome, I want to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So it's like thinking, if I'm lucky enough that I'm making this job and I'm making this thing that I... I'm not worth it to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, how can I? How can I make this special? Uh, and and that's what I try every day. And 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 in terms of action, for instance, it's 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 such a joy to work in balance. And and with American Gods, it's the same thing. I was getting, which is kind of funny because I can't say a word about American Gods. But, uh, yeah. but the episode that I got to direct was great. I was yeah. so happy for many reasons. And and the only thing that I might be able to say is like. Uh, Matt Sweeney, published driver, who is playing Matt Sweeney, has a big role in that episode, and I was so happy because I'm a big fan of his character and oh, yeah. him as, a, as an actor. Yeah, and and we got to do a great episode together, and, and very very happy. Oh, yeah. I can say a word, but but I, but uh, because they will get really mad at me. But you just made you just made me have chills again because he is <laughs> one of my favorite characters on that yeah, show. Right. Oh, cool! You're and love and the fact that. He, your episode has to do it. Oh man, I can't, oh, I can't wait. Wait till I tell my wife she's gonna flip out. <laughs> but that oh, that's that's amazing. Can't wait for that. That's this 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 question actually kind of piggybacks the, the, this this mm-hmm. question prior here. Um, Chris and I are both huge fans of the Walking Dead universe uh-huh. and and the, that sure. zombie horror genre. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. know that you worked on one of the best. Uh, you directed one of the best episodes of Fear, Fear the, the Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. The episode you directed and, and okay, thank you. <laughs> we uh, honestly we didn't know. Obviously, we didn't know about yeah. it in, until you know we did. We knew you did Fear the Walking Dead, and, and we said like, "Holy cow! Wait a minute! That's that <clears> one episode that." We went back and we're watching the video that we did on that episode, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. like one of our favorite episodes. Yeah. Oh, really? Of that oh, of that so nice. show in that. That's season. one of the things with, with with directing episodes because it's like your your name. You know that you've done the show, but your name gets lost in IMDb. You never get yeah. to know exactly yeah. the episode. It's a little well, confusing. Well, how sometimes. was it? How was Go. it working on that show? Another AMC show, number one, uh-huh. and working with some mm-hmm. of those actors on that show must have been interesting. Just what's your overall experience? Just just on Fear the Walking Dead specifically, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a, I'm a I'm a nerd. I'm I'm I'm, be, I'm being. I mean, I remember as a child with nine years old watching Night of the Living Dead, probably um, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So, which I don't know what was wrong with my dad, but that's what happened. I love, I just, that's how I got into it. <laughs> hey, we were there too. We did that. Yeah. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. And like Thriller, yeah. you know, no, watching yeah, my God. Thriller. Oh, yeah. And... I have a funny story about Thriller. That I know that you... Because yeah. I had a, a very sadistic neighbor uh, that my parents used to leave me with him when I was a child just to <laughs> take care of me, right? And I was... I should have been like six or seven years old or something yeah. like that. And I, for whatever reason, I really liked Paul McCartney at the time. Okay. I really liked his songs or something, yeah, right? Yeah. I was a little child, right? And there, do you remember that this video of him called The Pipes of Peace? Okay. And which is like it's in the war and they're fighting. Well, oh, yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pipes of Peace, whatever. Yeah. So I really liked that video. So the guy, my neighbor, who was at the time, I don't know, 20 or something, oh. uh, um, he had a VHS tape with videos, right? Yeah. So I told him, play me the pipes of peace. But I said, but first, you got to watch Thriller. And I was like, no, I don't want to watch Thriller. <laughs> thriller. So oh he my God. forced me into watching Thriller oh, just no. for because he was a mystic fuck. So, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's <laughs> but, fine. That's uh, fine. But yeah, yeah. One way or the other, I was introduced into the into the zombies and the horror genre very very young, and I and I loved it. So when I got the and I was a big fan of the of the Walking Dead, not only the the show but the comic books. Yeah. Uh, so so you know I could I couldn't wait. It's like I think what I, was great about that episode specifically is like that uh, we had zombies, and I I love the idea of the of the 
we say in Spanish Plaza de Toros is the how do you say that in English? You know the 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 bullfighting thingy, <laughs> the the round bullfighting place, whatever. Oh, the oh the, the ring, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, so the that idea, like yeah. having zombies like protecting the protecting the place and all that, I thought it was it was a great metaphor. And in yeah. the end, I think what's great about that episode specifically is that although we have zombies in that episode, we don't don't have that many. But it's uh, it's all about the relationships. Of, I mean, you know the. It's like it was the, the conflict uh, between the two, like the two groups, and and yeah, exactly, and, and interpersonal so, between, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, it was very complex, and I loved it. And and again, that if we talk about the the experience of shooting, it was it was lovely. It was great. I mean, the the crew are they're all amazing. They're all great actors, and I really got along with all of them. And now uh, we're shooting in Tijuana, which is a fun place to shoot. Yeah. Uh, although although it was also a very Kubrickian, I would say, experience because we were in this hotel that, for whatever reason, was empty uh-huh. in Tijuana with me and the cast, pretty much. So we were <laughs> spending my weekends in an empty hotel in Tijuana <laughs> with the cast of Fear of the Walking Dead. That's crazy. It felt very like The Shining, a little bit. Yeah, or <laughs> even or even Fear the Walking Dead itself when yeah, they spent right? all that time in that hotel, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah. You felt it's like right. Uh, yeah, yeah it was you were like, in the show. That's great. <laughs> See, you it, was, say, it was basically... it was really funny. It was really funny. I was just trying to think. What was? Uh, I'm just trying to think about. Oops, sorry. Oop, I just want to move this thing. Oh, there you go. No. Oh shit. I, and my my computer's working. Oh shit. Fear the wall. You're still fine. You're still fine. We yeah. got you good. Oh sorry. Yeah. So for Frank, uh, you know, it was funny because it's like I, I remember being in my balcony, like like just with nothing to do, watching movies on a Sunday or a Saturday or something like that. Yeah. And I remember that. Uh, it, it's true that it felt like I was like I was in Field of Walking Dead myself in that empty hotel, and and all I was seeing was Frank, who is as you know is playing Nick. Yeah, he was uh, just playing basket like in the courtyard and super empty, like like empty pools, <laughs> and Frank just by himself just playing basket. And I was like, I should go play with him. <laughs> we played together oh, that's in awesome. a deserted, and it felt like a scene of The Walking Dead. It was so funny. That's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah see, no, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That, yeah, being around all the 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 actors and makeup and 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 the in the, in the yeah. I mean, and, and again, like Coleman Coleman is too. great. I mean, I mean, especially with Coleman and with Kim, we we and well, Alicia, all of them, but but Coleman and Kim, we were having a blast. I mean, I, I I'm a big believer in making the shooting experience uh an enjoyable experience you know of have course. fun with it you know yeah. because I, th- I think if you want to have an actor cry and express his emotions you have to make them feel that they can trust you and they can have fun and they can enjoy and they're in a safe place yeah. that's all it that matters so i remember with the coleman and, and with kim we were singing musicals and we were singing oh. songs and we're like and we we're having a blast there they're great that's great. That's yeah. it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome. I think it's really cool that awesome. when you show up on a, a set that isn't technically your set, but it is mm-hmm. for that episode, that period of time, like the fact that you can very easily get, you know, because y- you hear oh, a lot of yeah. But that that's important, man. It's like oh, sorry, I didn't meant to. Cut oh you no, off. I was just gonna oh, say no. because I have I've had heard uh, you know other actors say like oh yeah we had you know we have this one director or they were this one director that I got into a fight with and stuff and you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it seems like. But you know you know what I do is like one of the things that I forgot to, when they made you made me guys first question. This is mm-hmm. the thing that I do every time that I come into a show like The Strain or Fear the Walking Dead. What I or now Deadly Class. Uh, I, first of all, I introduce myself to all the actors. So I send them an email like saying, hey, this is me. This is my work. And I send them my movies and my TV shows. If you have time, you can watch it. Great. If not, I understand. But right. this is this is who I am and this is what I do. Right. And then I meet them all separately. And and, and it's, it has been funny to me that, that some directors don't, uh, which is shocking to me. It's like some directors, sometimes they're very like like hired guns and they just yeah. go doing it's, one it's show, job, another show, right? another show. Yeah. It's a job for them. And then they just show up on set and one day and they're, oh, that's a new guy. Boom. Hey, hi. And then yeah. <laughs> suddenly you're shooting the show with a new guy you don't even know. Yeah. And I, I, like I said, it's like I try to, to keep this kid alive and try to make my passionate thing that I love. Yeah. So it's like I go, I talk to them and we have a coffee and we talk about what they want to do with the show. Are they happy where they are? What can I do, can I, can I do better to make the experience of shooting together better? And, yeah, and building it's, that kind of relationship. Yeah. yeah, but it's really funny how they're very shocked in a good way. Like, oh, you care. That's great. I mean, yeah, you're, right. you're gonna, you want to know what I think. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And we can talk offset and we can create this relationship and do something. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's what I try to do. You know, um, 
you know, talk about flowing and everything. This this Q and A is flowing very well here because the next question <laughs> I have is just flowing right into what we're talking about. The segue is uh, um, impressive. You know, I think I think one of the main things is it, differences. Let's say between you and say one of those hired guns is that you have mm-hmm. the passion, but not only do you have the passion, you have it for a reason because you you said you didn't go to film school. You started mm-hmm. you started just by making short films on VHS mm-hmm. and and everything and that passion you've brought that with you and that's why and like you, again you don't work on the shows that you don't have the passion for because then then what's the mm-hmm. point what's the point of doing what you're doing mm-hmm. then you might as well just retire and be like well i don't want to do it yeah. anymore so no, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know having said all that um you kind of the, the question is you know uh what inspired you to to, to do what you're doing you know um you you did mm-hmm. talk about that um you know uh, you know for the most part but looking back what were some of the mistakes that um that you find inspiring for you and that was part of your learning process hmm well it's a very has many pieces that question but uh, but i would say that um like what did you learn from everything that from point a to now some of the mistakes mm-hmm. you what was some of the or... things yeah yeah i mean I, 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 would, I would say generally that uh Again, for me, storytelling has been a very important part of my life. And I'm also a writer and I've written most of my films. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was a child, like I said, like me going to the video store and renting films, it was a uh, renting movies. It was a, a very big part of my life at the time. Like I remember like to go to the video store where I where I used to rent my films. I had to go through a kind of dangerous neighborhood oh. uh, for different reasons. I mean, I, I was raised in a poor neighborhood in Sevilla, my hometown in, in, in Spain. And I had to go through this kind of like sketchy neighborhood, right? Yeah. So I, and I was a fat kid with glasses, like <laughs> forever, right? Uh, and the thing is like, I had this trick, which is just like, like take off my glasses, hoping that I was going to look dangerous or something. So maybe they don't <laughs> get the shit on me and get my money. Uh, yeah. But it didn't work. It didn't uh-huh. work because you, you kind of like bump into the, <laughs> into the bad guys and they, <laughs> no, yeah. and they take your money anyhow. Nah. So, uh-huh. uh, so when I got to the video store, the days that I got to the video store, for me, uh, it was my, it was, you know, the place where I was happy, you know, yeah. and when, when, when I discovered like, like beautiful films and I, and to me that was happiness. Yeah. And what I'm now that I'm, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so like proud of what I do. And I, and I feel that, that, uh, that, that being able to, give that joy to people and to maybe to people like especially into the balance which is a show that has a very young audience yeah. uh, audience sometimes I, I i love doing that and and what i've learned through the process is wow so many things is so hard to say but i think that the main thing is this um when i started i was a i'm being a big fan of martin scorsese since i, I was a child i watched taxi driver when i was 11 or something yeah. like that uh which again, not again, a, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> that won't fly. That, that won't fly now. No. <laughs> but it's funny because you know what? What what I learned on Taxi Driver, and that that's a good answer to your question. Mm-hmm. I learned there was a person named director on Taxi Driver. Oh, there you Until go. then, I thought the movies weren't broadcast live. I okay. thought the thing was <laughs> happening in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea what, there was somebody who was like taking pictures of that thing. Yeah. And then okay. the way, I, the moment I remember the moment very vividly in in Taxi Driver, you have a moment with Travis uh, Robert De Niro. It's like at the very end, he puts the hand on his forehead and he looks up, and then there is a, a, a overhead shot like going over the whole kind of like house with all the dead people, and it's yeah. a very long shot. And I thought, how how is that? Oh, there must be somebody doing that. <laughs> so, so it's like that kind of my brain clicked, and I was like, "Well, I would love to do that. What, what is that?" Uh, so, so again, so I was a big fan of Marcelo Sunsese, uh, and then so when I made my first and second film in Spain, I was drawing. Uh, I also draw, so I was drawing every shot, every shot that I was going to shoot. And then when I learned when I started doing TV shows like Penny Dreadful. Yeah. When you have to encounter a scene with four pages, it doesn't make sense that you draw all the shots because you have to rehearse the scene with the actors, to block the scene with the actors, and and depending on their moves, this that your shots are going to change, right? right? Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't make sense that you prepare yourself that way. Uh, so uh, I learned to love that process, which is great. It's like at first, as a 
as a director was beginning, I was always scared about actors. I was always like, oh, shit, <laughs> I want them to sit in that chair. They're not going to sit in that chair. And now my whole like idea of how I'm going to shoot the scene is going to go to hell. Yeah. But then I learned that it's a dance. And normally the instincts of the actors are right. So you have to, you know, dance so, that, yeah. that, that, that dance with them cool. and, and kind of like, like try to dance with the camera around them. And that's the, the, the biggest thing that I've learned. You know, it's like, like try to make the process organic. And, and in the end, uh, and this is a little bit more poetic, but I think it's a nice metaphor. To me, uh, storytellers and directors are like, what we do is like we steal truth. That's the way I see things. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it's in a way we have to create a world that feels real. And so when every day that the actors come to set, like when we were like creating episode six of season two, we had the kind of Mad Max kind of like red world when they are like in this kind of mines. And, yeah, yeah. and you have this, this crazy guy with the spiky hair and all that. The, the day that, that Nick Frost and, and Daniel came to that set that we put so much work into, they were like, this looks fucking real. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. So so if, if you create a world that looks real, the reactions that the actor are going to have to that world are going to be real. Right. And in the end, the only thing that you need to do as a director is capture the emotions that they have in the moment. So that's why I mean that direct, the director in the end is stealing truth. That's great. So that's, that is a yeah. great, great line. One of the group members, Angela, posted, uh, reposted something, uh, an article with you and, and saying how you can look after baby Henry and all this kind of stuff. And he's in a good hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so th uh, we thought that would be a cool uh, question. And she also thought the same. How is it, how is it tough? How is it working with with babies just in general. I mean, you just <laughs> talked about, you know, working with the, the cast and how much you had to, you want to build the trust oh, and my. all this kind of stuff. So oh, God. how is uh, it, is it just waiting on a moment when they, they look a certain way and you just to make sure I you am, capture I mean, it? Or? Hitchcock got it right. Never work with babies, animals, or whatever the hell, whatever <laughs> right, else yeah. he said. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. I mean, I love babies. I have an, a ten-year-old daughter, and I'm not saying I don't have anything against babies. Of right. course, yeah. But I've shot with dogs that are way more professional than babies. That's all I can say. <laughs> no, professional no, baby it's, it's really actors. I mean, it's, it's uh, I mean, I got really good with that baby because, and I, and and he was great. Uh, uh, but but at the same time. Uh, we were trying, you never know, sometimes the baby is in a bad mood, sometimes the baby is sick, sometimes the baby is smiling when he's supposed to be crying, sometimes he's crying when he's supposed to be smiling, so there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so we wanted all the time to have the baby interact physically, no, mostly with Daniel or with some of the other actors, and right. to have them in the same shot, and it was really difficult, because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And, and... Sometimes we had to do a very tight close up of the baby. Uh, and when that time came, uh, if you want to make the baby laugh, I got really good at making baby la the baby oh, laugh. Okay. <laughs> because it was when you see Henry laughing uh, or smiling at Daniel, That's you. it's me being like, <laughs> doing that very close to the baby and making him laugh. See, but so, that's, yeah, I mean, just, that's how good you are with actors. It doesn't matter what age. You're that good Yeah, I do the same thing with Nick Frost. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Nick. Nick, Nick. No, I'm just joking. Nick is great. I know that a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, films or TV shows or anything like that, there's usually like a set of twins. Now, he wasn't a set of. No, no. That we found a baby, baby Sia who was, was great. And, 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 and the things like we couldn't, she, you know, uh, there was no twin to work with. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like, the, it's not like full the, house the, the honest truth like is that. also that that hmm. of course being the son of Daniel, he has to look specifically, you know, yeah. uh, like him, and it's kind of hard to find a baby yeah. like that in Ireland. So, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> wow, awesome. Um, awesome. Paco, do me a quick favor. Bring your camera yeah. down just a just a slight. Yeah, yeah. Cut, cut your headroom a little bit. A bit, like that. Put up a little or bit the other more. way around. Go up a little like, bit. You mean, you mean that? Like, no, you're like right. I, you're right. But just, like just, I do that the other way. Go up a little bit the other way. Yep, the other way. A little, no little bit more. A little bit more. You mean this way? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try that. I'm just trying to cut out the headroom because when you move, I don't want you to. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're Got good. It, you're good there. That's better. It looks a lot better now. Let me just write that time code down. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Let's see. Um, Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, can you talk to us a little bit 
um, about uh, the movie Rage that you worked on. Can you just yeah. how was it to work with Nick? I just want to know how was it worked to Nick to yeah. work with Nick Nicholas Cage and Danny Glover? Like, what was that like? I was great. I mean, uh, working with Nick was was amazing. Nick is the most dedicated actor I've worked with. He was there the first one on set with me. Oh wow! Nice. And he was like, uh, I mean, he was crazy about the script, and he was. I mean, there's nothing bad that I can say about Nick. It's like, I know that you heard the stories and then he has his crazy times and when he was like like doing these crazy things. But I, the, the, my experience with Nick uh, was was beautiful because he's a nerd in a good way. He loves oh, yeah. horror movies. He loves Japanese movies. He, he loves, loves Superman. Korean. <laughs> you know, it's like he, he's a nerd and, and I'm a nerd. So we were nerding out. We were talking about like a lot of comic books and, and horror movies like most of the times. And, and again, he's very dedicated as an actor, and I love that. You know, when someone he was always giving to 100 percent, you know, and and I and I love that experience. It was just nothing that I can think of. I mean, it was it was a difficult movie for different reasons for me because it was my second, my first film in the U.S. and mm-hmm. and and it was a tight budget. And I wish we could have we could have uh, you know the things that I regret about the film. But but generally, I'm very happy. I saw it the other day. I saw a, a tiny bit of it. I saw the action action scene that that I that I had, and uh, there was a moment when he gets into a house and he's just chasing Russians inside of the house with a yeah. shotgun. And I saw the scene the other day after years of having watched it, and I thought, "Wow, this is pretty cool." Because I didn't remember <laughs> that one. Yeah, oh, I did pretty good that one. And I thought one. that in the script, it was nothing. In the script, it was just just he's chasing a guy. And yeah, I turned, yeah, he's chasing a guy like this and like five minutes or 10 minutes of of something you know and, and yeah. i love when you when you get to do something like that so so yeah it was great and also danny danny is oh shit sorry uh you missed me for a second i'm so sorry are you are no, you no, still no. there we guys? got you oh yeah we got you okay yeah. uh and also danny 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 is amazing. i mean i'm a huge fan of of uh lethal weapon so yeah so just having him there and i right. i tried really hard not to make any jokes about Lethal Weapon. Oh. I couldn't. <laughs> he didn't take them well. So it it's, it's, oh. <laughs> no, I was it's a fa- very funny guy. That's great, though. Uh, you did mention to us, though, that you that you really enjoyed uh, your movie, Mr. Right, with yep. Sam Rockwell, Anna Kendrick. Uh, mm-hmm. What was that like? Oh, my God. It's probably my best experience shooting uh, besides Badlands. Uh, I mean, Sam is the probably the the best actor that i've worked with he's so funny and he's so he's changed every take is different for them yeah and then i had this obsession uh within the action it's like in the movie he's this assassin this hitman who, right. who kills people but at the same time he's dancing while he does it so he's fighting and dancing at the same time and to me like doing those choreographies i i that's what i do normally you know whether it's in balance or anywhere else uh, like here in deadly class it's like yeah. I, the stunt coordinator comes to me and said, we thought about this move, blah, 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 and we thought we could do this. And normally I always give a spin to whatever they think. And I don't know, I have a, I don't know, I, I like bringing my own touch to, to the action. Yeah. And in that movie, I, I was doing that a lot because we had, we had the references of Muhammad Ali, we had the references of Harold Lloyd and James Brown, and we were just trying to mix those three <laughs> personas in one and try to, so it's like, yeah, let's do that. But he's doing this kind of James Brown move at the same time, and it's da 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 da. And I had so much fun. And then Anna Kendrick, and, and I mean, it was a blast uh, shooting that film. It's one of my favorite. Uh, one of my favorites. Did you? So you've you've made this. You're you're carving out this this you know this path for yourself, and you're you're working mm-hmm. with so many amazing people, working on mm-hmm. so many amazing things. Did you ever see yourself as like an action director? Was that something that you wanted to do, or it just, you just it comes easy? Yeah, I, I don't know. Honestly, there's two things. First of all, there's this thing that sometimes like horror director and action directors feel like a lesser name. Like it yeah. feels sometimes like like it's yeah, this is an action director, this is a yeah. horror director, and to me, it's totally the opposite. It's like there's nothing more difficult than horror, action, or comedy. You right. know, it's like drama is easy. <laughs> it's, I mean, easy. Uh, you know, so to speak. Right. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so to me, uh, you know, uh, I don't see myself as anything, honestly, it's just the thing that I'm, if people see me as an action director, as an action director, um, uh, dude, I'm proud of it. You know, it's yeah. totally fine, you yeah. know, but, I, but, but again, I don't think, you know, it's like the beauty of balance is that it's like everything's part of the same yeah. world. So, so probably that the scenes normally that I'm most proud of 
were mostly drama scenes, honestly, you okay. know, in, in balance, like like scenes yeah. with with, uh, with with Queen and with Ola, like we were just doing this these dramatic scenes, and suddenly we came up with something that was not in the script, and and I loved those moments. I think that's where, with with, as opposed to another show, I think that's what Badlands stands out is that so mm-hmm. you know. Off the bat, Badlands is an action show, and I'm trying to do mm-hmm. quotes, right? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But but when it has these moments, these beautiful moments of drama, yeah, and it's it's the opposite. It's like oh wow, like this action show has this mm-hmm. be- has mm-hmm. these beautiful human moments, and mm-hmm. I, I love that. I love that switch, and that's why we love that show so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, let's. See. So you're in Vancouver right now, right? Yeah. Uh, you're working on Deadly Class. That's what you're working on, right? Yes. Now? Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. It's a it's a great show. It's uh, based on a comic book by right. Rick Remenda, mm-hmm. and the Russo brothers are producing the show. This oh, I don't know if you know this guy who made this little movie yes. for Avengers or something. <laughs> yeah, you know. So uh, so yeah, it's it's a great show. I mean, the script is uh, so great. It's so much fun. It's it's really it's a very uh, the only word that uh, that comes to mind when I think about this show is punk. It's very punk in a good oh. way. You know, it's it's uh, it's a great story. I mean, just check out the comics; you'll love it. I uh, yeah, that's, and, uh, and that's why I wanted to ask you about it because I'm a fan. So I'm like, oh, let's. Oh, do you know do you know the comic books? I uh, yeah, I know them a little bit. What happened? So um, it's funny because I I started I start reading groups of like series, and then I okay. get to another series, right? <laughs> so dead, so I'm I'm deadly deadly class is like two series behind where I am right now. As, okay. So I just keep it's just too much content. So no, I know, I know, man. But I had to, I had to, to ask us, it because yeah. when I found out that no, no, there was it's really, be a I, mean, show. I think I honestly think we have something special here. I can't you know, wait. the the cast is amazing. Yeah. And uh, and 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 again, I'm having a blast shooting the show. It's like because also the show happens in the early '80s. Yeah. And they, no, not early, but more like 1987, I think. Yeah. So it's my childhood. You know, it was yeah, a child. Yeah, no, I was you too, know, so. Yeah, same. So, so it's really funny because we're working with these very young actors. Like the other day, we shooting a scene when they, when they're like jiggling with this tape recorder, right? And and so you have the tapes, and the actor was like, "What is this thing?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, this is the tape." And then I used that. Right? And then I and then I he didn't know how to put it in the tape recorder. He didn't know how to, how to handle it. And then I said, "You know, in my time, we used this pen. You put a pen through the through the tape, and you rewind yeah, like yeah. that, like jiggling the pen because yeah. you're you're trying not to run out of batteries because that's." You know, yep. and I was like, "What?" So I, I <laughs> so I yesterday I was shooting a scene with them, and I, I I got him doing that thing through the scene. You know, just, just oh, that's great. Because, you know, so so it's that that's that's one of the of the things that I love about like shooting a show like that. It's like it, there's so many things that I did through my, through my childhood that happens in the show. Although there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens that I didn't do in my childhood, which is just like a lot of like ninjas and crazy <laughs> yeah, assassins yeah, 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 and yeah, a yeah. lot of like. Well, you see, if you love the comic books, yeah. it's, it's it's really I, crazy I, I in a very good that, way. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to see that. That that's gonna yeah. be so good. I'm, I I love comic book stuff, and it's it's so great. I'm so I'm so happy that you got to that you're getting to work on. Oh, thank you. On that, it's it's so cool. Um, is there any other projects that you want to talk about? Um, I know on on Instagram, oh, you're putting no, I up. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I wish I could. Okay. Uh, uh, the thing is, like, I, I'm making a movie in Spain, I think. It's going to be a Spanish film that I really want to because it's been cool. eight years since I'm shooting in Spain, so I wrote a film that I really want to do. That's awesome. I've been uh, fighting for that for a long time, and now I think it's going to happen. And besides that, I'm going into a huge show that I can talk about. I'm so sorry. That's but okay. When, okay. when the time comes and everything, yeah. you know, and knock on wood, uh-huh. uh if everything you you'll know when you see it, it'll be like, oh, that was a big show. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll know. We'll He's know. He's a busy yeah. man. He's a busy man. How do you? Um, I just had a. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about, about your writing and directing. Do you mm-hmm. find it? Do you think that it's? I mean, obviously, it's helped you as a director because you're a writer, right? So, but mm-hmm. do you think that 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 plays a big part in what you're able to do as a director because you are a writer? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you're 100%. able to do what you do. Yeah, it's like it's always, always there's a technical side of it, of course, yeah. where you're like you, you take a scene and try to make the best out of it. Yeah. But as a director, you have to understand the drama, you have to understand the conflict, you have to understand. I was also besides being a writer, I was, I was an act, I, I was an actor in theater school, and it was not I was a lousy actor, but but it's, it helps a lot. Everyone right, who yeah. wants to direct something, I will I will I will suggest that write and try to go to acting classes yeah. because when you're directing actors you understand that when you're in the stage and you have to play the character you need to know what the conflict is right. so what do i want as an actor 
What do I want to get? And what what's stopping me from getting that thing? Right. That's the only re- that's the only thing that matters as an actor when you are approaching a scene, yeah. and it's the same thing that matters as a writer when you're approaching a scene. So everything comes down to the same thing, right? So as a director, you have when you know that, and when you know how that whole thing takes place. And again, it, in many of the shows, it, I, the only thing that I that I I wouldn't say hate, but I don't agree with is like sometimes TV directors they say, well, you know, you just they give you the script, you shoot it, and that's it. Mm-hmm. It's not true. It's like like there's a lot. Of, there's a process, especially in balance, where we talk a lot and we rewrite the scripts, and then we find a great location. We say, wouldn't it be cool to have a fight in, in this tower? And why don't they just jump on top of the tower? And we do this and we do that. Wow. It's a it's a living process. It's a living creature that we nurture every day, and we try to make it cool and cooler and cooler. Yeah. Uh, so 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 and dramatically, it's the same way. It's like sometimes I'm on set, and and as a writer, you you something is working on the page, but sometimes it doesn't work, and then you you make slight changes. And you, like for instance, uh, I don't know if you remember that. I'm trying to think of a sample. Like there's a scene between Queen and Ola when Queen gets Ola in, sec- in the second season, uh, and he's in his office, well, office, yeah. and, and and they and they start making out. Remember, yeah. I don't know if you remember that scene. There's yeah. a moment he gives her the knife, and she has the knife. Mm-hmm. And and in the script it said that 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 she gets the knife and then they kiss or something like that. It was something quite simple. And I remember talking to Martin and talking to uh, to everyone about the scene. And, and I thought, yeah, there's something that could be better, but I don't know how. We were thinking about it. And then we thought that the the whole conflict in between Queen and Ola, it's pretty much uh, it's, it's very it has to do a lot with death and with blood and with uh, every you know everything's very physical in between them you know so so we're thinking isn't it better if she holds the knife against his chest and then the, the knife is getting into his chest and you see the blood coming out of his chest but then he he grabs her and they kiss with the blood and the blood unites them because he gets the blood and they kiss with the blood and all that stuff yeah. was not in the script I, I came up with it, and that, and yeah. and that's my that's me as a writer trying to come up with the best way to make the scene work dramatically and 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 pictorially. Fantastic! Very cool! Fantastic! Very yeah. cool! So cool! All right, I think we have one more fun question. Good, because my phone is running out of battery. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick. Um, if you can travel to any time uh, mm. or, or place, just to observe, not to interfere, but just to just to observe anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, in where, time? Where would right? it be? In, in time. time. Yeah. yeah, or anything. Okay. Yeah. If you had that, oh, that option, okay. that ability. Just, just to observe and you know, not just to do observe, anything. Not, not yeah. to kill Hilda. I mean, I'm not killing Hilda on this scenario. <laughs> not, 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 not killing. <laughs> no, you're not looking back, back at in something. Time and yeah. 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 something that okay. might inspire and interest you Wow. Uh, in any period. Yeah. Wow. So many. Uh, I would go. I think the nineteen the nineteen twenties in are a very interesting time of human history. You know, generally, you know, like the twenties and thirties. I think they're very interesting before the Great Depression. Yeah. You know, I love that 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 time. Uh, you know, because it's like you have the gangsters, and then you have like people were happy because it was the end of World War One, yeah. and they didn't know what the World War Two was, was coming. coming. <laughs> And they were like, yeah, the happy 20s, woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything was a little crazy, but it was also very, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very conservative at the same time, especially in the United States. Uh, so it's a, it's, it's a very interesting, you know, it's like uh, uh, for, a human, for the human race itself, it was a very interesting time, so a lot of culture really and, 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 and vitally, you know, it's, it's very interesting. But So yeah, I will go somewhere in the 1920s, I think. Very cool. That's very specific. No, that's, <laughs> no, that's great. That's just, it. Just get a little hey, inside. It's your trip. Inside. You can go wherever you want. So, <laughs> okay, um, cool. And all I'm right. Not killing Hitler. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not this time. Not this time. Um, all right. So I guess we'll. I guess we'll wrap it that. Wrap, wrap it up there. Your phone is dying. We don't want it to die just yet. Um, uh, so Paco, once again, thank you so much Absolutely. for being here. Thank, thank you for being such a good. Uh, how, how do you have fun, guys? I mean, I'm, uh, oh, I had a great a, time. I had a blast. Thank you for Abs- all these amazing questions. Absolutely. Um, and those questions, most of them came from the community. So uh, please go in the description, check out that Facebook group that yes. we're that we mm-hmm. got that these community members are from. Um, and. Um, yeah, we had we had a blast, Paco. Uh, where can anybody reach you if they want to talk to you or, or see what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like Google my name, Paco Cabezas, and and you will get Twitter or Instagram. And, and normally I I post most of the time in Spanish, but sometimes in English. Mm-hmm. But learn Spanish. 
and you will <laughs> you will know what I'm writing. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Check us out at Third Person Podcast uh, on YouTube. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of this interview. Of course, Paco, it was so awesome for you to come on. Check Thank us you. out at Third Person Pod on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter as well. And don't forget to have a listen to us on iTunes as well. That's right. Okay, so once again, Paco, thank you so much. And uh, we'd love to have you back on at another point. Uh, when that big thing happens, we'll have you back oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe when Deadly Class premieres, we'll have you back on. And uh, we'll do more hanging out. Uh, so okay. that's going to do it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. If you want more Into the Badlands content, please check out our playlist up there in the top left. And if you're like me and you love the 80s, why not check out the Retro Squat YouTube channel? Or you can click one of the videos right here.